Hello, thank you for joining me on this lovely spring day. I'm just out for a walk on Chorleywood Common. This is a um, lovely vast common in Chorleywood in the Free Rivers district of Hertfordshire. What we're going to do today is we're going to go and have a look at the Cedars estate and then we're going to walk down to the Metropolitan Railway to um, look at a possible halt that may or may not have once existed. So the Cedars estate is just up here. There, it's one of two um, former stately homes on Chorleywood Common. The other one is that way or a quarter of a mile or so which we'll perhaps do in another video. That's Chorleywood House. But today we're going to go and see the Cedars Estate, which this is the gatehouse for. Now, going back to 1861, this common was owned by a man called um, John Saunders Gillat, and uh, he owned the common and he bought the Cedars Estate. And what he did, he uh, modernised and improved the estate, the estate for his liking. He demolished the manor house and he built the manor house which we're going to see today. The estate now is a rather pleasant retirement village so in the grounds there's lots of little bungalows and flats for um, the elderly residents to live in. So here we have the gatehouse cottage and we're going to just walk up to the house have a look. Um, and then, as I said, we're going to go down to the Metropolitan Line. So these are some of the more recent developments. Well, I'd say in the last um, 25 years or so, maybe 30 years, maybe not quite 30 years, they built all these little bungalows. So it probably is quite a nice place to retire. Now, um, John Saunders Gillat, he, so I said, he owned the estate, he built the house, which we're going to see. He was the Lord Mayor of Rickmansworth. Um, so when the Metropolitan Line was being built in the 1880s, it was going to cut through his land. Now, he kind of was, in one way, he wasn't very happy about having to lose a bit of his land. But in another way, he was thinking, well, you know, if I can get to London a bit easier, maybe it's not such a bad thing. So what he did was he insisted on having his own private rail help built for his use so he could travel to and from London. And... Um, if you look on some of the local Chorleywood history websites, it tells you about this halt. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and investigate that um, because there's a bit of a grey area as to whether there really ever was a halt. But we'll, um, we'll, we'll see that when we go down to the Metropolitan Railway. So as we head across this lawn here, we're coming up to the house. A very impressive building, very French looking, I think. It looks... Um, a bit like a French chateau, just without the conical towers. So um, if you were living in one of these houses or bungalows, you've got quite a nice place, well, like I say, to retire to. Um, so here's the house. We're going to see it properly in a moment, as soon as we get up to here. Um, so it's... I know I keep saying it, it just seems like a nice place here. Anyway, here's the house. So here we have a lovely big Victorian mansion with Union Jack flying plowed on top. One thing I will show you, um, like I said, it's a bit debatable, did he ever get his rail halt or not? Well, one thing he, I'm not sure if he got it, but the estate certainly has now, does have a bus stop. And just before I started making this video, I actually saw the one bus of the day come in and out. So um, if you live here, you have got your bus stop. It's even quite a nice little bus shelter on the end of um, this building here, which I think is a garage block for some of the houses. Um, it's not particularly regular bus service, but you could get a bus if you want into Watford and out again. So I think I saw the bus returning. Anyway, let's just have a look at the house. So yeah, it's got a big, big mansard roof. And um, like I said, I think it's quite French looking. What we'll do, we'll go around here. I'll just show you the conservatories and what I'm going to do, I'm going to head back out of the estate and uh, we'll walk on down to the Metropolitan Line. So I think inside is facilities for the residents of the Cedars village. You can see, I don't, or you might not be able to see, I can see there's a library in there. Um, big, impressive conservatory here. So that's 
hopefully was the orange ring once I would have thought. There's no one in there. Yeah. I'm just gonna let you have a look through the door. See so yeah, I'd say that was possibly an orangery. I can see how they've got um, some stairs. It's not a spiral staircase but a staircase up, I don't know. We'll be able to see that particularly easily. And um, there's like a walkway all around the top. And we'll come round to the back of the house. See that how they've got um, a nice iron staircase going up. I'd love to have, love to go in there and have a walk around the top, but I don't know if I ever will. Here's the back of the house. You can see how they've built some more modern retirement flats for that side, which um, I can see a nod to the original design. They have quite a nice garden here. Big Wellingtonia tree there. And there's some cedar trees, so that's probably where the, well, they're the cedars of the Cedars Estate. So, the house looks a bit different now. It's still very pleasant though. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, head back to the gatehouse and we're going to walk across Chorleywood Common down to the Metropolitan Railway and we'll see if um, John Saunders Gillard actually ever got this hole um, that he requested. So we're now going to leave the Cedars Estate and there's the mansion behind us to this uh, Lime Tree Avenue which we came along when we arrived and as I said we're going to go down to the Metropolitan Line to try and find um, whether his hole ever was built or not, see if we can see any evidence that there was a hole. It's a very pleasant walk down there, down through an area of Chorleywood Common known as Artichoke Dell. Um, as I said I do really like the common, it's somewhere I often come for walks so I'm just going to show you a bit of that on the way. There's the gatehouse again. So to give you an idea of where we are, the main road runs along over there. Chorleywood Parish Church is only just behind those um, trees, but I can't actually see it. And the Metropolitan Line is is down here, so um, it's about half a mile away. So I'm just going to show you this first little bit um, of the walk. So the main vast expanse of the common is all in front of us, and there's this rather nice little lane, as you can see. Um, that takes us down. Well, this is actually Dog Kennel Lane, and um, we're going to have to walk all the way down Dog Kennel Lane to Berry Lane. Supposedly, the halt was on Berry Lane, but Berry Lane crosses the Metropolitan Line twice, so we're going to have to look at both places it crosses it. But first, have a look at this property here. I think this is quite an exciting property, sort of in a hole. Um, and the path takes us along above in the hole. I always think here it's a bit like, um, reminds me this area of um, when I was a child and I used to watch Rupert the Bear, um, the cartoon Rupert the Bear, he lived in a village called Nutwood and um, it just reminds me a bit of that really. So we are now going for a little bit of woodland and um, we shall soon come to the area called Artichokedale where there's a pub where um, I'm not going to go and have a pint, but I probably would if uh, things were a bit more normal at the time. So the Cedars Estate is oh, um, just beyond the trees there. So John Saunders Gillett, he, well, like I said, he owned all of the common and the Cedars Estate, he's had the railway put through in 1881 and he asked for this hole. He would have, long after his time, also had the M25 put through his estate so um one does wonder what he'd think of that i don't think he'd have probably asked for his own private junction because there is a junction quite close this is artichoke dale you can just see the black horse pub down there so i'm going to carry on until i get to the metropolitan line so we're now walking on down dog kennel lane you can just see the end of chorleywood common behind me as you can see, there's no pavement on this lane, which is, you know, quite a common thing on rural country lanes, so um, not a problem. But what they have done here, 
something quite exciting. The lane carries on down there. They've created this little path here in the hedge, which takes us off the lane and away from the traffic. So we're now going to quite literally go through this laurel hedging down to um, the Metropolitan Line. I just like things like this that are just a little bit different from, um, you know, your average path. Just makes um, going out for a walk a bit more fun. And then, of course, the path has to stop here to cross the drive to one of the properties. So we go up more steps and continue on. There's the allotments on the other side of Dog Kennel Lane. Now, the halts I was talking about, as I said, they were on Berry Lane. And just down here, Dog Kennel Lane joins Berry Lane. And as I said, it crosses, Berry Lane crosses the Metropolitan Line twice. So we're going to inspect both bridge, looking for any possible signs that there could have once been a rail halt there. So we're very nearly there now. Weaving around the trees. And um, just down here is the junction. So... This is Dog Kennel Lane, where that car's waiting. The Citroen coming under the bridge is on Berry Lane. Berry Lane continues off down there, and of course, there's the railway line. So let's go and have a look, see if we can see anything indicative of a hole. If it wasn't that exciting path, we'd have had to walk along there, which wouldn't be a problem, but you know, that path made it fun. So this bridge here, which is 14 feet and nine inches high, was there once a railway hole here? First glances, Looking at the bank, um, I deliberately did this video before the summer came along because I wanted a fairly bare bank. I can't see anything there indicative of a hole. I can't really on that side because it's already um, covered with evergreen plants. This bridge is MR96, so Metropolitan Railway Bridge 96. I assume they count up as you go out of London, so that way is looking towards Amersham, of course the other way is looking towards London. Now, regarding the halt, can't see anything, so obviously there'd have been a platform on both sides, can't see anything on that embankment, um, or that embankment for that matter, anything indicative of a halt. To me, I would say it can't have been here. So there's a possibility the halt was at the next bridge, which we're going to walk along and find, um, but yeah, I think we can rule out that there ever was a halt here at this bridge. So I'm going to walk back under Longberry Lane to find the other bridge. Continuing along Berry Lane, we have another path taken slightly away from the lane, like we did on Dogkinel Lane. So um, I'm continuing to enjoy the walk and um, enjoy seeing the spring flowers, the daffodils and the blossom. So, we now run nicely parallel with the railway. It would be quite good. If there were no trees there, when they ran steam on the Met, it would be a really good place to see a steam train because they'd be working hard coming up the bank. So this funny path I'm telling you about, we get to here, there's another road junction, down more steps, as you can see, continues on up there. Now in a minute we're going to come to somewhere which um, I made a video out a couple of months ago. Um, so you'll see that in a moment. But regarding this hole, um, so until I saw the page on the Chorleywood History website, I didn't know there'd ever been a halt here. I've got various books um, on the Metropolitan Line. I couldn't see anything mentioned there. And um, I've got various videos on the Metropolitan Line. I've watched various other videos on the internet. Nothing seems to mention this halt. So it was becoming more and more of a mystery that there's this halt mentioned um, but no one seems to know anything about it. It to me seems very unusual that there could be no pictures of the halt and this exciting path ends here. Um, so yeah to me I found all that a bit unusual there was no pictures or any information apart from a couple of lines about it on um, some of the Chorleywood local history websites it mentioned it. So it does make me wonder did it ever exist but it does say, on one of the Chorleywood history websites, it does say that you can still see the steps. So, well, we didn't see any steps back there, so we'll certainly look at the next bridge. So, there must be something to see, but I am starting to doubt, did this halt 
ever exist. Now, have a look at this in front of us. This is the M25, which would have also gone through um, John Saunders Gillat's land, like I said earlier, though he wouldn't have been alive to have witnessed that, but no doubt he may not have been best pleased. So, um, you may remember I did a video here, um, I said a couple of months ago. Have a look at the link on screen now, that was where I took you down. We walked under here and um, had a look, because I always said it was one of my favourite views out of a train on the Metropolitan Line. A couple of people, though, in the comments, they pointed out how you can quite clearly see where the Metropolitan, sorry, not the Metropolitan Line, the M25 has had an extra lane put in. Um, so I was going to show you there, but the sun's in the way, so I'm going to show you on the other side. So here is that very vast space. And the Metropolitan Line is like a model railway on a shelf up there. Um, but for that, um, do, as I said, watch that video. If you have a look at here, up at those columns, see these ones here? These are the newer ones where they've put um, another lane in. So it'll be the same on the other side, it's just it was a bit sunny there, so it wasn't so easy to show you. But you can see, looking up there, you can quite clearly see how this is a newer section of bridge. Now we're very close now to the other bridge on Berry Lane, so if there is any sign of any steps for this um, mysterious halt, it's got to be here. So I wonder what we're going to find. Um, I'm doubting the halt existed. Am I about to be proved, my doubts be proved wrong? We'll very soon find out. So, different sort of bridge this one, not the Brick Arch Bridge. Uh, we're going up a quite a steep hill, very lane changes from a flattish road along the valley to a steep hill. It'll take you up to um, the Mile End area of Rickmansworth. You've got another quite a posh estate here. If you followed that down, that will take you into Rickmansworth. Now to me, this location looks even less appropriate for a halt. The topography doesn't seem right. That said though, it would be a more convenient route because about where the M25 is, there would have been another Lime Tree Avenue once up to the Cedars Estate. So probably a better location for a halt, but not an easier location. So potentially he could have got on and off the train here and walked up there. But did he ever have the halt? That's the question. Again, on there, I don't see anything indicative of a halt. I cannot see any steps. Um, but we've still got the other side. So what will we find? Mrs. MR95. So Metropolitan and British 95. So yeah, they do count up from London. Let's have a look. Oh, now that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I can see some steps. I don't think they're quite old enough to be. Have a look at that. Look, yeah, okay, there is definitely some steps. Remains of steps going up there. I don't think they date back to the time that the Metropolitan Line was built. I think they're engineer steps. They've been added at a later date, they've worn out. And um, whoever writing the local history website, um, you know, well-meaningly wanting to provide the best information, assumed they were the steps from the halt. So my conclusion is the halt never existed. Yes, um, John Saunders Gillat requested the halt. I believe that because that was quite common at the time when landowners had a railway put through the land. Yes, he requested the halt. I don't think he ever got the halt. If you want to prove me wrong, you know, please do. But like I said, don't just show me those two um, websites because that's where I got my information from. And as far as I'm concerned, I've disproved that. So as far as I'm concerned, there never was a halt here. Also, there's no suggestion of what its name was. And like I said, everything I've looked at on the Metropolitan Railway, there's no mention of it at all. So I think we're finishing the video here at a halt that never existed, but where trains pass through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And from the halt, which I'm pretty sure never ever existed, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.